well, we're on our way. Um, I'm only a couple miles over to this little pond that a good friend of mine owns, uh, acre, acre and a half. It's got some nice fish in it. It's allowed, it gives me a chance to go someplace close, get an hour or two hours in, get a little fly fishing, and that's what you're looking for. If you're starting out, you want to find some place that's going that you're going to be able to access. And, and let's be honest, this is a very important thing to keep in mind. You're not going in here today to land a, a seven pound largemouth bass or a four pound smallmouth bass or a 40 inch muskie. You're going today as a newbie, a beginner, to land fish. That's what you're here for. Um, the, the learning how to walk before you run. Actually with fly fishing, I would say probably you're crawling at this stage and that's what you want to do learn how to catch fish um, and this is also a great time for me my preparation I, I love fly fishing like nothing else um, so I'm preparing myself for the type of fish where are the fish going to be holding what's the weather like for example it's 58 degrees we got a north northwest wind coming right now. Um, it's again late March. Are they spawning? Have they spawned? <clears throat> How deep will they be? Is the sun out? This all sounds complicated, but you'll continue to add to your repertoire of skills, and you'll be able to ferret out this this puzzle. And that's what it's all about. Fly fishing is solving a big puzzle. Okay, and I love to solve puzzles. So while you're driving there, start thinking about where and how and what happens if I don't catch fish right off the bat, what are going to be my backup plans and things of that nature. And the other part of it is, if you go with a friend, and you've watched many of my videos, if you've watched my videos, I travel a lot with my, my buddy Frank, and uh, this is a great time for us to, to talk about all kinds of things life things, fishing things, um, silly things. Uh, we've been friends for many years, so it's it's a great social time getting to and from the, the water. Okay, so use this time. Uh, don't get too terribly antsy that you get there and you've forgotten something. Uh, that's going to happen, okay? So you might at this point in time be going over what do I need with me because you don't want to be three miles downstream heading in one direction to be picked up when you remember or figure out that you don't have your uh, fly, fly glasses or your magnifying glasses with you. Listen, I've done that a number of times. That's a bad time to figure out, especially maybe you're young and it doesn't matter. But once you get older, it's going to matter. And uh, it's, it's tough enough tying knots without having your glasses. It's almost impossible. So think things through. Enjoy this time as you get ready to go fishing all right so we are at the pond a couple cast in I've got a two weight on and <clears throat> little 12 inch bass which is fun on a two weight rod again if you don't know your rods the smaller the, the number the smaller the rod but there's a healthy little bass Okay, we're gonna let him go back. Water's pretty chilly. Again, I've got a floating line. And um, I'm fishing a little shiner pattern here. Let me nip this off, show you a little shiner pattern. Looks like a little bitty minnow. Floating line. This is my two weight outfit. And all we're doing is making nice easy cast, short strips, it's got a little weight on it so it's getting down, and we're making it look like a bait fish, pretty simple, okay, this is the part that you've been practicing for, being able to make cast, now if you notice I've got some wind today, and uh, I'm going to put the wind at my back whenever possible, like hitting a golf ball it's going to be a little bit easier to get airborne it's 
going to be a little bit easier to cast and we're going to pull this little fly in and around some of this cover here looking for bass <clears throat> bluegill maybe a crappie we'll just see what we find so let's give it a shot saw the flash that could be a crappie yep it is oh and he's taking it way down deep inside and that's a pretty decent crappie as you can see that's a white crappie not bad okay and this is exactly what they're after right now at this time of the year is this little bait fish pattern very simple to tie so Here's what else we're going to do. We're going to keep a few of these crappie today because the landowner wants them out of the pond. And so that's what we're going to do. Okay. I have got a little gizmo from, oh, you can find this on my website a couple years back. And it's basically a live well and a rod hand, which is my right hand. And as you can see, I'm making short little strips, making that bait fish pattern look like it's fleeing. Oh, and right there was another hit, probably another crappie, yep, for sure. And they are gobbling this little fly up. And on a two weight, that's a lot of fun. So as you can see, again, we'll open up. He's taking it down down in there pretty good so we're going to pop him off and put him in my net and uh, keep going there's a very good chance that we have a pretty good school here a good crappie nice very nice let's just see what this guy might go what size we've got going on here yeah about 11 inches yep waiting for it to hit the water there what do we got small bass yep a sunfish all right or a bluegill excuse me no it might be a sunfish third species Crappie coming on today. Yep, they are liking this little bait fish pattern. Didn't 
easy. All right, so there we go. That was a good lesson if you were watching right then. Felt the tug, and with my left hand, my line hand, I strip set. Now, if you're a beginner, that's going to be a very tough skill. Okay, got this a little largemouth bass. Let's take this off real quick, and then we'll talk about, again, he's taking it just like the crappie are. They're taking it down deep in the gullet. Uh, come on out of there. And let's put him in there with the others. So let's take a second and talk about this. <clears throat> Again, line hand, left hand, rod hand, right hand. I'm keeping my line as I'm casting. Again, I'm not going to do a casting lesson, but I'm keeping my line away from my rod. Now my line goes through my stripping finger and I'm moving as you can see, the fly by pulling that line with my left hand. I'm stripping line and I'm also going to strip set the fish and let me show you how that's going to happen as I'm pulling the fly back in. Okay, and if I feel a tug, I'm going to strip set. Shorten that line, hook the fish. Okay? Oh, right there was one. I could have done it for real. What I don't want to do is when I feel the fish hit is to lift the rod because now I've just pulled that fly way out from that fish. I've taken it out of his area and often they'll hit or try to stun a bait fish and then come back and finish it off. If you strip set and just take it six or seven inches and it misses, the fly's still there. You can leave the fly there and they'll come back and clean it up. And in fact, that's a technique that smallmouth do a lot is they hit, stun their victim, come back, take it face first, head on. Um, so you've got to learn how to strip set and practice that. Okay. Let's try a couple more casts right down. Again, we're trying to keep the wind kind of at our back here. It's a tough swirling wind today. But I'm stripping short strips, waiting to feel a tug. If I do feel a tug, then I strip set through my finger, then lift the rod and keep connection between me and the fish. And then I can land the fish by stripping the line on in. Let's see if we can land one right here. I'm letting that fly kind of set there and pause in between strips. There we go. And there it was on that pause and you saw me strip set. Now I'm fighting this fish and I've got to keep contact between me and the fish and I'm lifting my rod and bringing the fish on in and you'll get a hang for it but it's not going to happen and remember our goal when we start is to catch fish just catch fish doesn't have to be pretty doesn't have to be big just catch fish there's another good crappie we're going to put it down in the the uh, net behind us and that's what we're doing we're just continuing down this line with this little bait fish pattern making cast into these shallow areas and I'm stripping and I'm pausing ah well that wasn't a very big one nah <laughs> let's see what we got there oh that was a little bass if you saw that my strip was so powerful that I yanked him completely out but there you go go grow, grow up and be a big fish okay. someday so I hope you've got something and you've learned something today that you can that you can take with you and and be useful. But don't get impatient. Don't quit. This is this is the best sport. Period. 
um, you're going to love it but it's going to take some time to learn and to figure out how to do some of these things okay put your time in practicing think about <clears throat> your mechanics get a lesson watch some videos uh, most importantly they'll find somebody that knows what they're doing and I'm not talking about the guy at the bait shop that, that that's fly, fly fished a couple times I'm talking about somebody that can actually help you with your casting casting will will then equate to catching fish so glad you came along today I hope you learned something check in with me hit the like button send me a question visit my website at flyfishingwithjeff.com all right so it took us so oh, about an hour 20 minutes there's a lot of wind out there today to creep our way around the edge of the pond and I kept a few there you can see there's a couple decent bass and several nice crappie down in there that will make a nice meal so that's what our goal was was to come out today and catch some fish so that's what we've done.